Hello, Acron fans! This is Shadow 53 bringing you another exhibition match. It's time between J Raccoon and Vikarin on Mantanier Transfer. We recently saw a game between these two on this map, and this is, as far as I understand, the second game they played in a row on this map. So if you haven't seen the first game, I'd recommend watching that because it'll probably get referenced in here. So the first game... Okay, spoiler alert if you care. The first game was between Grekum versus Grekum, like this one is. And J Raccoon was... Well, J Raccoon is in the bottom left corner, and Vikram is in the top right. And J Raccoon managed to very quickly set up a... Like, I should actually go back further. Vikran went for essentially a walking expansion. He would walk his triad down, set up a few octos to build RPs, walk his triad down further, and was basically going for a proxy a proxy octo rush. But Jericoon managed to stop it using a couple domes, which destroyed the triad and... That's right here, actually. Destroyed the triad and stopped... Well, stopped Vikran entirely. He had no units to build anything except his Arcticus, which he had placed in the middle of the map. He then managed to place his Arcticus down right next to the transfer station here, and from there, he was able to rebuild a triad and rebuild a bunch of units, actually get chronoporting going, and destroy J Raccoon using units that came out of his Arcticus just at the last minute, just barely staying alive. So this game, interesting to see what he's doing. He is going for walking... Vikran is going for walking expansion again, but he is... Last time he went to his natural, now he is going straight down the ramp to the bottom expansion instead of going from his natural to, in this case, would be the north. While J Raccoon is going to be, he's putting his Arcticus up at the very front to defend against any incoming attacks, and he is going to be building up in his main base. He's not doing a walking try. Or sh no, wait, he is doing a walking try. He is moving his, well, he's lifting up his Faro and Seppi. That might have been a mistake. So I'll wait on that to make sure if that actually was a mistake. I think he may have meant. Yeah, it, it looks like he probably undid that. He probably meant to keep them in the base. I don't think he's going to be going for a walking triad. It's not hard to do, it's just that it does require... Well, it's just not really his style. It does require a bit of attention, but also it's just not really his style. Vikran does that a lot, though, so I do expect this from him, and he is doing exactly that. He is moving his Sepian Octo... Sorry, Sepian Faro forward to build Octos. He is getting... They are progen right next to the bottom base. He doesn't be building anything yet, but he is paused, so it's hard to tell. So both players really trying to work on the perfect start, trying to make sure that they're paused. Perfect start, of course, making sure that you pause to set up all your orders as quickly as possible, as efficiently as possible, rather than just trying to do it by fast clicking. It's something you can do in Akron, but it comes at the cost of going further and further into the past, so you usually need to use Chrono Energy to do this. At this stage in the game, it doesn't make a difference, but it can in the future. So it looks like, no, Jared Green is not going for a walking trade, he's going for very early Reef by lifting up his Seppi to build the Reef. While the Faro is going up the front, I don't think he's building another Arcticus, but he is getting another Seppi and Faro to build up, probably going to build up a Spire with no, he's not going to build a spire with this. That wouldn't make sense. He's too far away from his triad. At any rate, he does have a secondary triad coming in. He does have more units coming in, another Faro and Seppi. He will be able to build up more Octos, get his QPRPs built up. And J Raccoon does have his Octos building up as well. This is at the 236 mark. He's about 15 seconds ahead of J Raccoon building up a reef at the south base. He's also got his Arcticus at his natural expansion. And his main base does have 5 LC and 1 QPRP. So moving his triad closer to J Raccoon, going into this little side, little side plateau here or on the ramp of the side plateau, not going into J Raccoon's natural. While well, J Raccoon, about ten seconds down from there, is getting more octo, sending them out to the to the corner expansion, the bottom right corner. So he's definitely going for a broader expansion, but he's not going for moving his triads along. He's actually kind of ceding a lot of map control for that because. Vikran right now can easily attack anything along this part of the map, can protect this expansion, and his main base, it's not really directly protected, but it's hard to bypass this section. It's difficult to just move units around it, especially since Vikran is actually sending, and both players at the same time, but the four-minute mark, is actually sending quite a few units into J. Raccoon's main. He's going for a massive base class rush. This is not at all unexpected. This is what he normally does. He does have a Faro and Seppi there and a ton of Octos. The Faro and Seppi will probably be used to progen more Octos once he gets into the main base of J. Raccoon. Actually, one of the Octos is being used to build RPs. Oh, wow, that's just cheeky. He's building RPs inside J Raccoon's natural. The J Raccoon is, like I said, going for the bottom right expansion rather than his natural first. That is still pretty ballsy. I, I'm, I'm actually quite amused by that. So the Triad is actually being built up in J Raccoon's base. I don't know if J Raccoon is aware of this. And 
Oh, should I point out, Vikrant is getting Chrono Porting. So he will be able to Chrono Port back there. Doesn't have a lot of QP right now. He has a fair amount of LC, which he's using on his base class units. He has very little QP, though. He is, does have QPRPs. He will be able to build it up in time, I'm sure, to actually use Chrono Porting. And now J. Raccoon has Farapods. Point out, J. Raccoon had gotten a Spire. He has Farapods built up. He somehow managed to bypass this entire try. He just barely missed it, too. But he is going straight for the main base of Vikrin. You'll probably be able to see that Vikrin is completely open in his main base. But he's also getting attacked heavily by base class units. Should be a good hint that Vikrin is nearby going for a base class rush. And of course, Jericho has quite a few resources, so he should be able to deal with this, no problem. He should be able to build up, deal with this. At the present, he should... It, bit surprised he's not, but he can if he wants to. And his Farapod... Oh, wow. Chrono Porter partial detected, so... Farpod is at the 520 mark. Vikarin has chronoported back. He has chronoported back. Let's see here. Well, it would have to be around here. Doesn't he has like skipped over the chronoport actually? So the chronoport has not been propagated yet, but the red time will propagate it once that comes up. Jericoon will Jericoon will be able to see what's going on, and you will know that the chronoporting technology has been researched. Though it's a little bit late to know because that's in the unplayable past. Actually, he's already aware of it because he does see the departure alert. And that is... So this Farpod also... Go, actually, oh, the Farpod's moving. Okay, that's why. So, Jericoon may be aware of this triad here, but he didn't attack it, which may have been a bad idea, actually. Seeing as he is getting heavily attacked by units from the past as well. Vikarin jumping back just to check out his Chronoports. And setting up more Chronoports as well. Though still leaving the red time wave to propagate itself, not bothering to propagate the Chronoports further than it has to. And Jericoon's... Farpod is actually able to get into the main. Is attacking the LCRPs, but this is too late. This really is too late. The only way out of this. Oh, should probably point out. This is playing on the. This is being played in the EXP mod. I should have mentioned before. The EXP mod. The main change is that. Oh, and here we go. Farpod. I'm sorry. The Farpod and Sebi were the ones that are corner ported back. Anyway, so as I was saying, yes, a group of Farpod Sebi's not just four of them corner ported back. The EXP mod is one. Is the small mod that we've, that's been made by the community just in lieu of the latest patch, waiting for the latest patch, which will be coming up soon. The main change is that, which actually won't incorporate changes in the next patch, it's just an experimental mod. Main change is that Seppi's Teth Pulsers and... Actually, in this case, just worry about correct them. Seppi's have higher range, Octoligos have splash damage against air, and Octopods have an ammo mechanic that allows them to fire in quick succession when they shoot. That's what we saw before, where the Octos are just assaulting this far, just destroying completely right off the bat. There's an ammo mechanic, this bottom bar here, and that controls how they can fire in this particular mod. So I should probably point that out because this isn't actually vanilla Akron, but the Octopods are the only main difference we're going to see right now. The Octos are coming in from Vikrin to the top, so Vikrin is using Chrono Porting very effectively to attack multiple bases. He does have units with their Chrono Clones attacking the main base of Vikrin, while he also has some Chrono Cloned Octos, actually Octos and their Chrono Clones coming in, and this is multiple levels of Chrono Cloning too. Coming in to destroy the top right expansion. Well, the Farpod does do its damage on Jer for Jerakun's part, but that's not going to be enough. And this is right when Chronoporting is being researched, too. So, Vikram's done a very good job of re-Chronoporting and using that effectively to increase his army size just enough. We'll get through this. So, yeah, Jerakun is going to have to concede. There is no way he can get out of this. Or he can just wait until, the, until he's destroyed and then it goes off the timeline and, you know, that happens. But he's probably just going to concede. So yeah, very interesting game. That, okay, that was a lot less something that Jerakun could have done anything about, unlike the first game. This game, that was, I mean, okay, admittedly, he could have spotted that try, and is worth scouting for tries. It's really worth scouting for this sort of thing, just in general, against anyone with any race. For a Grecum, Octos are probably the best bet, unless you can get Seppi Paws really quickly, but that does mean that you're trying to get Arianus really quickly, which is expensive. Octos are a good bet. But they are still ground units. They aren't the fastest units in the game. So anyway, that was very interestingly done. Very nice little self-reinforcing chronoport there. Nice re chronoport going on. And yeah, really, really like to see how the chronoport mechanic really being used, used to its fullest extent, or at least used to a great extent. And Vikrin has displayed that. So well done, Vikrin. And Jerakun, like I said, scout a bit more, and that is counterable. Because the thing is, this is counterable if you scout it out. If you get rid of the triad, it's really easy to stop. And Jericho did this the first game too, which is nice to see. But it's just a matter of being wary of this, because this is something that will happen <laughs> just in general. I'm not just saying to Jericho. It's just all everyone out there is watching. This is the important thing to worry about, is proxies. Like in all RTS games, or almost all RTS games, proxies are worth worrying about. 
So, I hope you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching, and have a good night.